What's up guys, welcome back. I'm coming to you guys with a, a basically a pretty technique specific video uh, for once. It's been a little bit, a lot of fishing reports, but now it's, I'm trying to kind of drop more of these videos for you guys in 2022, as well as maybe some just more videos of just me out here fishing uh, and doing things like that. But this video is about swim bait fishing and swim bait fishing in the winter time. Um, what, I get a lot of questions on it. Uh, a lot of guys are like, how do you catch, or what do you do to find big swim bait fish or whatever um, in the winter months? Uh, Cause it's cold, you're not getting as many bites. You know what I mean? It's harder to find these type of bites. Um, but it's also the your best uh, chance at catching the biggest fish of your life uh, is this time of year from November, October, November until April or March, April, maybe even May, you know what I mean? Uh, that area right there of the year is big fish time. You know what I mean? That's when these fish are their biggest. That's when uh, they tend to move up shallow, especially during the spring uh, and things like that. So there's a lot that goes into this subject. Um, I'm going to try to cover it all in this video and uh, bear with me if I don't. I, I'm going to apologize in advance because I'm, I'm going to try to do my best, but I may not hit everything for you guys. So um, I'm going to say it now. I'm also going to say it at the end of the video. Please put a comment below if you have any questions throughout this video. I'm, an, I'm pretty prompt at getting to them, um, but it also helps out everybody else who's watching the video who may have the same question. Okay, so let's get into it here. So how do I find a swim bait bite? What do I look for, I guess? Um, it's winter time. It's cold. I look for ledges. If we're talking, if we're talking, let's say we're on Lake Berryessa, that's where I'm at right now. I look for a ledge, a main lake ledge um, or a main lake point, somewhere with deep water access. Big fish like deep water access. Um, will they be in the deep water? No, they may only be in a foot of water in January. I've seen it, uh, but they were close to deep water. They were close to 30 foot, you know? The, for them to go from a foot of water to 20 foot of water was about a 10 foot swim. You know what I mean? That's how close I mean when I'm saying these ledges. Uh, and also long tapering points that go out into the main, main lake. These spots are, uh, are great spots for picking up big fish because main lake tends to be where a lot of the trout roam or a lot of the uh, bigger forage tends to be uh, also where the bigger bass tend to be in my opinion uh, so looking for those two areas specifically if we were talking Berryessa uh, that's where I would start and I would also be around rock or hard bottom uh, structure fishing type stuff you know what I mean the hard rock bottom uh, foundations bridges you know just the, the structure um, is where these fish like to be in the winter time and that goes for I would say no matter what fishery we're talking, if we're talking Barry, Clear Lake, or the Delta, um, you know, I'm just referencing those because those are the three I guide on, but um, there's plenty of other fisheries that have that stuff. Natural lakes and reservoirs and all that stuff, I guess. Now, if we're talking, let's say the Delta, you're trying to catch a big swim bait fish on the Delta. Uh, you know, first of all, why would you do that to yourself? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, would, I would be still, targeting structure you know what i mean those areas that have deep water access but out of the current that's the biggest thing in the winter time being out of the current because these fish don't like to be in that strong current this time of year they like to be away from it and then, then i would also just target areas that have structure right a bridge um uh what else a a dock a 
maybe just maybe a rock levee that's that's sun that has a sun on it all day you know things like that and then if we're talking clear lake clear lakes a natural lake i'm gonna go to that deep hole like the deepest area i can find um that that's where the ledges come in too you know what i mean i'm gonna find deep like a 40 foot hole that's right up against a ledge with maybe some docks that serve as structure as well um, and I'm going to throw a HUD in there. I'm going to throw like, I'm going to sink down a glide, you know what I mean? Things like that. Um, it's places like that, that hold those big fish, uh, this, this time of year. Now, as we transition into the spring, which is coming here, these fish are going to move out of those winter areas and they're going to follow, they're going to get up that ledge and they're going to start following into these spawning areas. And they're going to, I don't know if any people have really followed the, or my YouTube or Instagram for very long, but they they move up on the the points i mean every main lake rock point's gonna have a big fish on it come spring um and you guys know i like throwing a jig at them but you could throw a hud at them too you could throw a a trash fish trash fish is a fantastic one uh and that's just you know that's not just for clear lake clear lake has the hitch and a trash fish is a great imitator of a hitch but the trash fish doesn't only get bit on clear lake it gets bit on barry essex it's been on the delta phenomenally <laughs> it gets bit everywhere like that i know of um the eight inch trash fish is a fantastic bait for getting a giant bite a six inch trash fish as well but the eight inch is just a little bit bigger uh things like that uh, these fish will move up on these points and they will sit on these these main lake points and feed before they're even even they're not even thinking about going back there yet they're just sitting on this point eating and getting kind of fatter for pre-spawn and and a lot of times they like crawfish because they're eggs that i think I was reading a, an article about it, how the, the protein from crawfish actually helps their egg development um, in the springtime is what some, I think some university did a study on at some point. I have to pull up the article or something so I don't sound like an idiot and it is a credible uh, source, but I don't want to get too long winded on where they're at, but that that's kind of a summative of where they are. You know what I mean? For in winter and spring, they're kind of those, those deep areas that are near, um, they're near their spawning areas. You know what I mean near shallow areas. Uh, but the but right now, like it's no, it's January second right now. If we're talking right now, I would target just the ledges, the main points, the main main lake points, and the rock points and stuff like that. Uh, and how some other videos have talked about in the past, what spot on your lake looks the best? You know what I mean? What is there like a, a I don't know a bunch of just steel rebar and big boulders and stuff like that pushed into the water somewhere fish that <laughs> you know what i mean uh things like that hold fish you know bridges stuff like that you'll you'll find fish there um so that's like where they are right let's talk about how to catch them this is this is diving down the rabbit hole for you guys so this is going to be a lot of information i'm going to be throwing at you guys but Bear with me. So swim bait fishing, in my opinion, if you only throw a swim bait 100% of the time, you're doing it wrong. And I might get a lot of flack from those trophy hunter guys out there who've been, who have, you know, been doing it forever. But I don't, I don't agree with it. I think there's time and place for traditional tackle and there's a time and place for swim bait fishing. Um, there's a lot of different swim baits out there to cover all those different, you know, realms of the traditional tackle. But I find my swim bait bites a lot with traditional tackle. Now, with that being said, the caveat to that is I don't think I'm going to get that 12, 14, 16 pound bass to eat, uh, eat my swim bait after I've been throwing a jig in there or a drop shot or a Carolina rig or just things like that. I don't think it, it, it really works like that and because mainly I don't think those fish school up as hard as you know, those five to five to eight pound fish. Um, but that's a still a fun fish and a good fish and a fun fish to catch on a swim bait. So a lot of times, you know, for example, um, I was on Clear Lake recently uh, and I got on a little swim bait bite with, uh, with Lil Pay, AKA Peyton Lindell. Um, and I found it with a jig first. Right. So I was like, oh, the bite's off, dude. We found it. Cause what happened was we were fishing. Dig him? No, I don't think so. You my jig fishing ability. 
He didn't really smoke it. It was just kind of like a tick. I threw, I threw a jig in there, uh, got a bite, threw in there again, got smoked again, threw in there again. Got sm I was like, oh man, they're here. And so what I do, I fire a HUD in there and we started getting tail bit on the HUD. They started, you know, things like that. We put some scent on it, uh, which is a whole nother factor of swim bait fishing. Um, I'll try to get into here, but we threw, we did all that stuff. And that's when those, you know, that's when we started getting HUD bites. You know what I mean? My God. I'm gonna send that to my client real quick. Yeah, I found it. Uh, he caught a couple on the, the 68 uh, HUD, and then I got, I think, one or two on the, the eight inch HUD. I broke one off, I'm pretty sure, because I suck. Uh, it was just one of those things. It, I let it take it, and it took me between some rocks, I think, and uh, broke me off. But I've noticed this too. Like, if you throw a, if you start out with a drop shot, mm -hmm. and then you, oh my God, his mouth fucking. Dude, did you see that? My line was like, boom, 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 boom. oh my god, he's still on his spot. He was really chomping on it. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> oh my god, look at him. Look at him go. Look at, look at my line. You gonna eat it? <laughs> oh, I broke off. No, you didn't. Yep. 100% we broke off. You know, you didn't. Look, he's right there. He's trying to net him. But that kind of, I'm gonna. Uh, hopefully you guys saw those clips uh that's an example of finding a swim bait bite with traditional tackle first and for anybody who has never caught a swim bait fish or never caught a hud fish that's how you do it because you're going to gain confidence in it that way instead of just coming out to the lake and being like i'm only going to throw the hud today and that's the only thing i brought that's stupid that's dumb you're not going to catch crap you might get one bite you might get lucky but like you, that's not a very smart way of doing things you gotta think tactically here you know what i mean like how are you gonna build confidence in it so that you only you don't only just throw it for one day you throw it a whole entire year you know what i mean and you have confidence to do so you gotta ask yourself these questions uh, so i tend to have swim baits rigged up all the time i just have traditional tackle as well rigged up all the time and i'm throwing around and and then you'll what you do is you start picking up on the environmental factors that go into, oh, it's time to throw the swim bait. You know what I mean? Like I'm up on a point, you know, I'm I'm throwing a jerk bait and I'm seeing these big fish chase my jerk bait at, into the boat, you know what I mean? And the wind's blowing into this pocket, they're chasing trout or something crazy. That might be time to throw the freaking glide out there and get them to go on it, you know what I mean? It's, it's understanding those environmental factors. Um, now that's a pretty obvious situation <laughs> to throw a swim bait, but you know, let's say the wind's just starting to, the wind's been blowing out of the south all day um, and you're, you got a point that faces, that faces north. And all of a sudden at 3 p.m. it's been switching. Every day for the past week it's been switching to blowing out of the north and blowing straight into that point. That's your bite window. Right there at that time, that's when that fish is gonna switch or that, that's when that fish is gonna be positioned there and ready to eat. It's, it's predominant winds it is um, shadows, shade lines. It's things like that, which only come with experience. You know what I mean? You have to be out there and be observing that. That's why people say time on the water is the best teacher because you are out there experiencing these things as they go down. Um, and it's just, it's enlightening you on how it all works. Um, and it's kind of the easiest form of, of figuring it out and finding those swim bait bites. But if anything from that guys, just 
if you can take anything from this video, attention to detail is, is extremely important when it comes to this type of bite. I get clients all the time on my boat who have, I can tell their attention to detail is, is lacking a little bit. And, and it's not all, you know, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect either. I'm trying, I'm learning, but if anything, the military taught me was attention to detail. And that's, that's what I think is transferred very well in the bass fishing realm. But, uh, you have to pay attention to these things. You have to pay attention to everything around you. You have to pay attention. You have to know exactly when that wind switches. You have to sense it. You have to see, you have to know how the birds are acting, you know, yet. And that's, that's where swim bait fishing, I think is, is one of those things like the guys who only throw swim baits, the trophy hunters, they're more keen to, to that. You know what I mean? I think they're more attention to detail oriented. The tournament guys, not so much. I, that's not a, that's not a shot at any tournament guys. I, I think there are tournament guys out there who are very attention to detail. But I just think there's a majority of swim bait fishermen and the majority of tournament guys, uh, the majority of swim bait fishermen tend to be very, very, very good at understanding environmental cues. And then tournament fishermen, there tends to be less of them. That's all I'm saying. Um, don't, not trying to offend anybody here, or get into a fight in the comments, but that's just my opinion on everything. Okay, so talked about how I find, or where they go, how I find them, or how I get bit and kind of kind of fight or find that original start to a swim bait bite. Now let's talk about how to catch them, right? So let's say those fish are on bottom, right? They ate a jig, they're feeding down. Might be time to throw the Roth 12 HUD. You know what I mean? I, I mentioned Roth 12, right? Because you can throw a HUD in the middle of the water column too. But if they're feeding down on bottom um, and they're, you know, eating down, it might be time to eat or to throw the HUD uh, and work it through. Now, I also was talking about you have to find a lot of uh, swim bait bites in order you, before you get comfortable throwing swim baits, right? And that's why I recommend doing traditional tackle first because you're gonna you're gonna find you're gonna stumble on a lot more swim bait bites than with traditional tackle than you would if you just threw the swim bait all day every day and things like that. You might stumble onto one here and there, or a few bites here and there per year, but not nearly as many as you will with traditional tackle. Um, and the, and the reason you need to be really comfortable with throwing a swim bait is to be able to differentiate between what bite is settable and what bites not. I was talking about the one I broke off on Clear Lake, which I, I'm pretty sure I probably threw in the clip if I did or didn't, I'm not sure, but that fish bit it and was biting the tail. It was munching on the tail and I can tell by the way the bite felt. And then I finally, I felt it was munching on it, munching on it. And I finally felt it like get up here and bite and then gill flush it. You just feel the, mm, and it just pulls back a little bit and started swimming. That was when it was time to set on it. But what, what I didn't know was it was tail biting it and swimming with my hood around a rock. And so when it finally did take it and freaking threw it back and I set the hook, my line was on a rock and I broke off. Usually that doesn't happen. <laughs> Usually they freaking munch on it. Um, and stuff like that, and you can set on them and get them in the boat. But I explained that because you have to know when to set the hook with a HUD. You shouldn't, like, a lot of guys will be like, oh, I got thumped, and they just set the hook. You just blew your shot with that fish. You need to just keep it rolling, keep it going. And it doesn't always need to be creepy slow. You don't always need to be just really, 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 really slow all the time. You can, I've got on HUD bites where I'm mashing it. I've got them on bites where I'm just, you know, just a steady retreat. Majority of my hub bites are just a steady retrieve, believe it or not. Uh, I think it's because maybe I rile them up with the jig first or whatever, but you have to understand what a tail bite feels like and what a, what a bite that's settable feels like. Uh, there is a difference because um, a lot of times you get tail bit on the eight inch hud pretty frequently. But if you keep it rolling after that tail bite, a lot of times it comes back, tail bites it again or something, and you just keep it rolling and then it just gets pissed and just eats it. it happens all the time. So understanding that, uh, we'll put more HUD fish in the boat for you. Okay. I talked about bottom, right? Those fish are feeding down. Now let's talk middle of the water column. 
there is a swim bait bite in the middle of the water column. Believe it or not, trout don't just swim on bottom. <laughs> they actually, majority of them swim in the middle of the water column. So if you guys want to catch a really big trout eater, I might get some flack for this, who knows. Don't throw a hut on bottom. <laughs> don't throw a big trout imitating swim bait on bottom all the time. Throw it in the middle of the water column. You know what I mean? Throw it 15 foot over 30. Just like suspended fish. Big fish like to suspend, especially big trout eaters. They love to suspend because their food is suspended. Um, they will use bridge pilings. They will use anything they can, like a rope as a current break or whatever. Um, a dock, you know, things like that. Something that uh, an upper uh, form of concealment. Things like that to conceal them um, to be able to feed effectively. They also use points and stuff, but they suspend off those points to be able to pick up their meal, right? Trout aren't dumb and they don't just sit on bottom all day. Yeah, maybe a wounded one does, but the healthy ones, not so much. So throw a raw five, throw a raw zero and nail weight it down to what you need to, uh, or where you need to fish it. Like nail weight, I always put nail weights behind the gills here. Um, if that's why I, I buy a lot of raw fives and I just nail weight them all the time. I don't even, cause raw twelves are sometimes hard to find, um, in certain colors, but you know, fish it more in the, in the middle of the water column. Now, if I got fish who are, let's say it's suspended, right? Um, you know, off a point 15 over 30, maybe I throw a big glide bait, you know what I mean? And I let it sink down to, you know, I, I've counted down because you know, there's fast sink glide baits and there's slow sink glide baits. I let it go down and then I start working at that, at that depth of the water column. Water column is very important when we're talking swim bait fishing. It, it's not the most important factor, but it's, it's pretty gosh dang important. Uh, so think about that, you know, when you're, you're on that jerk bait bite or that a rig bite, the suspended type of bite, um, a suspended fish, you could catch those with glide bait potentially. Right. Or, or uh maybe a, a it's still a swimming style uh swim bait but it's middle of the water column instead of on bottom now a top water let's say they're blowing trout out of the water or they're blowing up on shad you can still throw a big lunker punker or a big walking or a big wake bait in the winter believe it or not because trout go shallow in the winter time guys so a lot of times you can find those shallow water trout or up really shallow, I mean 15, 10 foot of water. And the, when the bass are pushing them near the surface, you can throw a big wake bait at them, a big trout colored wake bait in the middle winter and that fit and a big one will still eat it. Water, you do not, 60 degree water temperature, yes, you're gonna get a majority of your top water bites above 60 degree water temperature. But below 60 degree water temperature, you won't get a lot. You'll get the freaking right ones. <laughs> Bobby Barrick talks about on the Delta with frog fishing. That guy, he knows how to frog fish better than anybody else, I think, ever. <laughs> um, he knows that there is a frog bite in the wintertime on the Delta. And it's not, it's very specific and it's around a specific type of grass, but um, that still exists in the wintertime. Um, but it's very, you know, it's cold, cold water. So you're not going to get a lot of bites. You got to get that out of your head. It's situationally dependent. And that's where... Uh, Learning how to traditional fish first helps you identify those times when you can pick up that wake bait in the winter time and throw it around. Um, it's all about time on the water, guys. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Time on the water is the biggest teacher, and that's how, I mean, that's how you guys, you know, learn everything, right? And that's how you get good at fishing. But sorry to get sidetracked. Um, you can definitely throw a lunker punker on those fish as well. Water column is very important. Now let's get into the other very important aspect of swim bait fishing, uh, angles, right? Angles are, are, if not more, or damn near more important than water column at times. Uh, because in my opinion of fishing pressure, as well as predominant winds and things like that. Uh, but fishing pressure is, is pretty crazy because I've had community hole spots where people are hitting it day. I mean, every hour dang near. Uh, with, with, with swim baits even, and they're not catching crap, but you hit it from the right angle and they bite it. You know what I mean? They're there. They just, they want it. They want it from the, the angle that they know it's real. You know what I mean? Or from which the real thing always seems to be. 
because uh, fish learn pretty quick when it, when they get stuck with a big hook and they get muscled into the boat and they have no chance. You know what I mean? That's a pretty negative um, impact on them in which it conditions them quickly. Fish aren't smart. They're very conditioned. Uh, and big ones are more conditioned than the rest of them. Uh, so instead of going to my spot and throwing in at it and bringing it downhill, maybe I go and get around and come up and get up shallow and then fire it out and bring it uphill. A lot of the biggest fish that I know of caught on the HUD tend to be caught uphill or parallel. Uh, it's just, that's, this is the way it goes. I, I think it's just because they don't see it and that's how they're, the real thing tends to be moving or you know, that's how, when they're eating the real thing, that's where it's coming from. Uh, now, parallel, I talked parallel with like a glide bait maybe. Maybe not just a HUD, but uh, bringing them parallel to a bridge piling or a wall, you know, someone, something where they can feed it and, and pin it to something or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, or a grass line. Hell, I'll throw in a, I'll throw in a, a clip of me out here on Berryessa. I freaking lost a giant. Because I suck. <laughs> Because it bit it at the boat, which is a whole nother thing. But it was on a tree line or a buck brush line in which those fish, that fish came out of that tree line and was feeding out using the tree line probably as concealment or something along those lines. Uh, and it just pinned it up against the boat. It also used the boat as, a, as something to pin it to, right? So it knew it could get it. Uh, it just bulldogged me and got loose. But that was, uh, yeah, it still hurts me. But uh, anyways, where, where was I going with that? I got I'm losing track of my mind here. I'm going crazy. Uh, oh, so parallel to like a buck brush line or a grass line. Fish use the grass line as concealment and they feed out a lot of times. I, I've seen it sometimes where they'll pin, try to pin things to the grass line, but that's usually if it's shallow, uh, really shallow grass. Um, I've seen it with like bull shads and stuff like that. But, but yeah, don't be afraid to change up the angle in which you are fishing. I get parallel a lot. I get uphill a lot. Um, what else? Bank fishermen are at an advantage, believe it or not, when it comes to swim bait fishing. Uh, Cause boats are pretty, like big fish know when a boat's in the area. It puts off a lot of just water displacement, um, vibration and noise, you know what I mean? Especially aluminum boats and things like that, uh, depending on how they're set up. but. You know, being a bank fisherman means you're very stealthy and you have a really good chance of catching a really big fish. Uh, and fishing fisheries that, you know, aren't necessarily as pressured like the three fisheries I fish on. Dude, I fish three of the most pressured fisheries in the world and I'm still able to catch some really big fish and I've had three shots at a 10 pounder this year with clients and it's just, or look about 10 pounds. Um, but it, it just, you know, fish come off when they're hooked on clients lines, it seems like. But <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked on the video a little bit here, but, but yeah, so fish areas, maybe lakes and fisheries that aren't necessarily as pressured, you have a better chance at a 10 pounder, believe it or not, uh, because those fish are less conditioned. It all kind of comes down to conditioning here. Okay, let's get into my setups here, right? Uh, HUD, this is my favorite HUD setup. This is a Mega Bass Orochi. Uh, it's a Leviathan, I think. Yeah, Leviathan. It's an eight foot uh rod and it's it's actually got i mean it's a pretty stiff rod but it's not as stiff as some of my other hud rods uh and this is a calcutta, calcutta conquest dc this is a very high-end setup guys uh, i don't recommend this is the only setup to have for swim bait fishing but it's a slow gear ratio reel a 4.8 gear ratio that is uh that's important for you know if you're fishing these slow um and that's a what most of the time I'm how I'm doing it in the winter time. Now don't get me wrong, I'll throw a hut on this setup too. It's a 
you know, a 5.8 gear ratio, a little bit faster. Um, or I also have a 7.6 or, yeah, 7.6 gear ratio tranks that I'll throw if I'm really mashing a HUD. I'll put that on here with 20 pound straight forward carbon um, and things like that. That's, and this is more of a broomstick. This is like an old Daiwa, this is a $100 rod, Daiwa swim bait rod. It's, it's garbage, but it works great. Uh, it gets them in the boat because when you hook them, you grind them to the boat. You do not stop reeling. I don't care how many times they try to come up. You keep them down and you grind them to the boat. This is what you do with, with at least the HUD. Um, glide bait, maybe not because you'll bend out hooks and all that stuff, depending, but uh, depending on your tackle. But yeah, so that is, this is my favorite uh, HUD setup, things like that. Glide bait. Let's talk about this glide bait setup here. This is a, uh, this is for a kind of a smaller glide bait. This isn't for a giant glide bait. You don't want to throw a, you know, a big giant, I don't know, depths 250 on this, on this rod. I don't think I would, I had a, it was a mega bass onager. Uh, it was a mega bass destroyer. And that was a great rod for that, that depths 250. But unfortunately the real seat kind of broke on me. So I haven't been able to use that rod. Um, but this one's been working good for these, these, uh, eight inch glide baits, these river to sea, you know, S waiver 200s, um, glide baits like that works great. And this is the, the Mega Bass Orochi Launcher. Uh, it's a 711. It's got, it's definitely kind of a, a tippier rod. And I like that for these treble hooks because treble hooks are one of those things you don't want a real stiff rod because you'll rip them right out of the fish's face. You're going to want something that has a little bit of bend or, a, you know, a rod that'll load up. Um, and then I just got this, I actually got this reel off eBay for like a hundred bucks. This Calcutta D series, or uh, I think it's D series, yeah. And it's just a, it's just a good reel. You know, it's a brown reel. It's a plumbable, pretty plumbable for me, 200 size. Uh, so it holds a pretty significant amount of line or decent amount for, for what we're doing here. Um, it's got a pretty good handle for it. Uh, this setup right here is pretty decent for throwing glide baits. Um, now big top waters, I do, I, I like a glide bait rod as well for big top waters because it, it's got those treble hooks again, right? Um, that, that's just, you know, it, it, it makes more sense that way rather than ripping them out of their face. So I've talked about a lot of information at you, or I've thrown a lot of information at you guys. I just hope you guys kind of, you know, take all this in. If you guys have any questions, please drop them in the comments. Like I, I mentioned scent and things like that. If you guys have questions on that stuff, uh, just drop it in. I don't wanna have this video go too much longer, uh, mainly because it's already, it's getting up there in time and it's gonna be forever to upload on YouTube. But, so if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments, like I said, or you can book a trip. Uh, I do trophy trips all the time. Um, well, I wanna do trophy trips all the time. Most guys don't wanna do trophy trips because they wanna catch fish. Um, and I'm not saying you won't catch fish on a trophy trip, you're just not gonna catch as many. Uh, it's just the way it works because we're talking about swim bait fishing. We're talking about angles. We're, we're, my goal as a guide is to teach you guys so you guys don't have to book me anymore. You know what I mean? Um, that, that, like, not have to, but so you guys don't book me anymore. You know what I mean? That should be every guide's intention, at least, because he's teaching you all the things that you need so you can go out on your own time from the bank, from your boat or whatever, and catch big fish in your own time. Where do they go? What time of year do they do this? You know, all these things that, that that guide has learned, he's trying to teach it to you. Yeah, time on the water is a thing, and he puts in a lot of time on the water. Um, so catching fish is, is more than likely going to happen. It's just one of those things that you, my goal is to teach first and find fish that will like demonstrate the principles. You know what I mean? Like I like to, if I'm doing a trophy trip, you know, and I find a, I'll find a HUD bite or something on a, on a point and the, it doesn't pick up till 3 PM or some crap. And I'll try to, you know, I want you to go there or I want to go there with you and be like, okay, we're here now because this fish is only going to be here right now because the wind is switched. It's coming out of the North now instead of the South and it's coming, it's blowing right into this spot and this fish is moving up to feed right now. And they throw out there and they get bit and all of a sudden it's a big one. And wizardry you know what i mean it's almost like you're you're playing god a little bit or something crazy uh but it's fat it's things like that that i'm trying to teach and demonstrate my principles uh or demonstrate the you know the things that keep me or that allow me to find fish uh day in and day out year in and year out um on on th these different fisheries right 
So that's all I'm trying to teach you guys. And yeah, I'm not perfect. I'm still learning. Believe it or not, I'm still learning. I'm only 25. Um, I'm not as seasoned as half you guys in Northern California. I didn't grow up out here. I'm learning these fisheries like they're, they're new fisheries. You know what I mean? I'm, I've only been out here for seven years. And so I have a lot to learn about this place. Um, I think I've learned a lot already, but I really, I'm, I'm never going to settle. You know what I mean? So I really need to keep trying to find new, new stuff and find where the, where the giants hang out and all this stuff. I want to learn more. So, um, all right, guys, I think I've talked enough. Uh, I think I'll probably drop another video in the future on just like tackle tips, like swiveling hook hangers or putting a swivel, uh, putting a, uh, an egg snap on the front of a glide bait, you know, just, just I almost swore stuff like that, uh, that will help you guys with swim bait fishing in the future. Uh, I might drop a video on, uh, later on, but all right. I will catch you guys on the next one. See ya.